Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. And today I want to talk to you about uh, eating disorders in cats. And, you know, the, so there's a lot of humans that have difficulties around food and develop sort of psychological issues around them. Um, and I think cats do the same thing. Uh, and in many cases, the way we feed and what we feed are actually what's at the root of the issue. So to give you an illustration of this problem, um, I wanna show you a picture of Josephine. And Josephine, this is me a long time ago, so more than, more than 30 years ago, which is a little weird. Um, and this is Josephine, and poor Josephine, was so sweet. Um, this is when I was in veterinary school. Her owner brought her in because she was absolutely convinced that Josephine had an endocrine disorder and this is why she was so heavy. Uh, so we talked quite a bit and she said, you know, she's done everything as far as feeding the diet food and all of this stuff. So when I talked to her further, what Josephine was eating was actually three cans of, of tinned cat food. So the little, you know, the little flat five and a half ounce cans, plus all the dry food uh, that she could eat. So my question is, is did Josephine have an eating disorder or what else was going on? Um, so the interesting thing is, is that we, you know, went through, we did the endocrine testing and no, she didn't have an endocrine disorder. Some cats rarely can be hypo or low thyroid, but most of the time they're hyperthyroid, which tends to make them um, obese, really, or excuse me, really thin instead of obese. There's a rare number of cats where that will be a little bit different. But at the end of the day, what was going on with Josephine was her mom kind of had an issue. And it's kind of an issue between Josephine and her mom, and this does happen quite a bit. So we, as a veterinary student, I think my, um, my professors were probably laughing their heads off when they read my discharge instructions. But, you know, weight loss means measuring things out, and it also means more exercise, right? So at the time uh, in school, they made us write everything out in kilograms and grams, which of course nobody else, you know, no regular human uses. So I'd written this very sincere diet plan out and, you know, told her to pick up the dry food so that it's not down all the time and all this stuff. And to feed X number of grams of food, blah, 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 blah. And for exercise, I think this is the part why uh, my professors were laughing their heads off. Josephine was petrified of being outside. And so her exercise plan was to take her to the farthest corner of the yard and let her run back to the house to the open door. So, um, you know, so we laid this all out. The owner thought, okay, I, I, I got this. You know, we had no problems. She seemed to be on board with everything. And so I called her two weeks later to check in. And I said, well, how are things going? And she said, well, I haven't been able to find a gram scale yet. So she hadn't changed anything. She hadn't reduced the volume of food or anything of that nature. And so I figured out how much it was supposed to be in uh, ounces and things of that nature. And she's like, okay, got it. And I said, well, how's the exercise going? She said, it just seems so cruel. And it probably was, but there you are. That was the only thing I could think of at the time. So I called the owner back two weeks later and uh, basically she just didn't want to return my call. So there's two things going on there. Uh, one is the owner uh, continuing to want to feed her you know, way, 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 way more than she needed to eat. And the owner wasn't, you know, she was just sort of the average looking person. She wasn't overweight or anything of that nature. Um, but what happens, I think, is that this, this is a great illustration. So she, the owner, had a lot of stress in her life. And so I think that our pets end up taking on so much for us. And they will show you exactly 
you know, kind of what you're struggling with in your own life if you're observant and think about it. And I'm slow on the draw, so it took me a lot of years to figure this out. But I think with cats, what happens, the other component is that dry food is sprayed with stuff on the outside to make them think it's delicious. And so we talk about cats being crack or dry food addicts, and it is true. I mean, the, you know, the companies, if you think about Lay's potato chip, they spray something like 14 to 30 different components on the outside of the chip so that you can't eat just one. It does something to our brains to make us eat, want to eat more and more and more. And all of a sudden the bag of chips is gone, right? Same thing with cats. They get this texture affliction, um, and the taste that they just, they literally are addicted to. So Josephine, part of her issue was the food, but part of it was mom. Uh, And so that's really the thing. You have to kind of reconsider what you're you're feeding and make adjustments so that you're in the right ballpark. Uh, In general for cats, I would always say the first step is to get them from dry food to canned food, and then ideally from canned food to cooked food. And this is not always easy. I tell the story about our cat, Romy. Uh, It took me six months to get her from dry food to canned food. And from canned food to cooked food, it took another three months. So, I mean, it's just insane. So uh, what is this all about? And Trisha's saying food opiates in the comments. And yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It is stimulating the same pathway that in many cases that opioids do. Sugar and opioids stimulate a similar pathway, which is why heroin addicts will often eat something with a lot of sugar in it to kind of, you know, not come down and have have withdrawal symptoms. Um, the other component is that it, it induces different neurochemicals like, uh, um, oh, for goodness sake, I can't get the word out. Um, the bonding, oxytocin, the, the bonding hormone, um, endorphins, as we just discussed, food opiates. So what do you do with kitties? And, and there are cats too that I had a client come in and she had two young cats and cats are nocturnal animals. So for them to learn to sleep through the night and, and do their regular cat stuff during the day can take some effort as well. But she, these kitties were keeping her up at night and, uh, she was, she had this rig she'd found on Pinterest where she took a power strip and, um, one of these little remote switches that will turn a light on and off and a hairdryer, plugged the hairdryer into the little on and off switch into the power strip and had the button on her bedside. So at three o'clock in the morning when the cats were like dancing on her head and saying, mommy, mommy, our food bowls are empty. um, She would push the button and turn the hairdryer on and just freak them out. Now that's a little, you know, it is what it is. And it's like, if you've had enough sleepless nights, you're gonna go to, you know, whatever it takes to, to, get some sleep. You know, if you close the bedroom doors, these guys were sticking their feet under the door and jiggling it all night long, or standing outside and meowing and then escalating to screaming. There are other cats, people have told me that if they're, if the entire bottom of the food bowl is not covered, they will scream. Uh, and there are other folks, you know, just picking up the dry food bowl. Again, the cats are screaming. So it, it's really, really hard because they are truly addicts. And so, you know, how do we deal with this as pet owners? It's hard. Um, Part of it is to shift away from the commercial dry foods. So onto something that is like a freeze dried raw, something of that nature, they're not gonna like it. Because again, we are taking away the thing that they are addicted to, which is all these flavoring components. So at some point in this process, you're gonna have to live with it for a few weeks. Remember, cats can literally starve themselves to death, so never make an abrupt change in the food. Um, You know, make sure that they are getting enough to eat so that they do not develop hepatic lipidosis, which is where if they don't eat, they digest so much fat or release the fat from their body stores that they end up choking off the liver and creating liver disease. So number one, 
don't let them starve. Your cat will literally make himself or herself sick before you relent and feed um, you know, whatever it is they're, they're addicted to. And this can take as little as two to three days. So always mix food together. With cats, start with things like, um, you know, a, just a teaspoon of the new food, introducing it in the other, and then get them switched over from there. So just be patient. And as I said, it can take months, but if it takes six months and at the end of the day, you're able to get your cat onto something more healthy and nutritious, then that's awesome. There are some cats that simply will not convert off of dry food. And Romy in her old age, when she hit 18 or 19, I guess it was, um, she was like, I'm not eating this cooked stuff anymore. And so we had to go out and buy her kitty crack to keep her eating. And you know, it was what it was at 19. She deserves to eat what she wants to eat. But you know, if you've got a five or a six year old cat, this is when making that shift can make an enormous health difference. One of the reasons it's so important to get away from dry food is that it, uh, it ends up creating most of the kidney and bladder disease that we see, and that's why it's so important to get them off of it. Now, once you get them switched over, uh, you know, just continue to take your time uh, getting them, you know, getting them onto a canned food and then onto a cooked food. One of the other strategies I've had clients use where if the cat is just not giving it up and they are going to start screaming at three o'clock in the morning until you get up and put some food in the bowl is to get a food timer. And they do make a food timer that has a, you can put a cooling pack in so you can put some canned food in there. And that's one of the best strategies I've used so that the cat stays unanxious because these guys, when they're screaming and there's no food and they truly are these little uh, dry food addicts, they are anxious because they're like, oh, my fix is over. What do I do? So we want to try and make it easy for them. The other thing I would certainly use is feel away um, or, or, you know, lavender essential oil diffuser or something like that to kind of help keep them chilled out a little bit more because you really are, you know, again, you're dealing with an addict. And so we're trying to help them figure out a new way, uh, way of being. So that's where I would start. I'd written a story about uh, poor Josephine in a blog post some time ago. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of those deals that um, I just, I felt so sorry for her because um, she just was so embarrassed whenever uh, people would come to, to see her. And it just was so, so disheartening. She was so embarrassed. And you can tell from this picture here, she's like, oh my God, you know, I'm not the freak show here. So that's kind of the other component as well. Um, so Trisha's trying to figure out how to heal leaky gut. And, you know, Trisha, I think you're, you're trying little, little bits and pieces, but unfortunately so much of the, um, the commercial stuff has multiple proteins, multiple carbohydrate source, all of that good stuff. So I think you really need to break it down into, um, into things that where you have one protein, um, and then ideally for cats, no carbohydrates at all. Yeah. And so that's, that's where I would head. Um, and you know, I do have a gut health program where it walks you through how to do uh, an elimination and rotation diet. And the other thing certainly is is I offer consultations. And uh, currently, we will give you a dozen um, a dozen uh, uh, holistic total body support. Uh, with the purchase of an advanced care package and six of the holistic total body support with the optimal health package. And in that process, uh, we can work through what we need to do to help fix your pet's gut uh, and whatever else is going on. And Denise has worked with me for years and can attest to the, you know, what I'm able to do to help people long distance. Um, so that's kind of what I've got for you today. Uh, you know, and poor Josephine, she was literally 33 and a half pounds and she should have been probably a 12 pound cat. So that's kind of, 
horrifying. Um, and there are a lot of cats out there like that. Um, we just, the way we feed them with commercial food has just created a whole host of issues. Um, the, the, um, the dry food, uh, just, you know, that actually is what we've done to cats and created kidney disease, bladder disease, diabetes, uh, all sorts of issues just because we're feeding them incorrectly. Cats are obligate carnivores, but to actually get them to eat raw can be a challenge. And this is the one, this is the species where raw absolutely is appropriate. Uh, but most of them can't digest it, and they frankly don't like the taste of it because they've been on these terrifically high carbohydrate diets, and it just is, it is not what they need physiologically. So with the crock pet diet, that's been my um, way to get cats to eat a healthier diet, but give them enough um, simple carbs in butternut squash and things like that to keep them eating. It is, a, and this is part of why we, um, you know, have such a hard time getting cats converted over to healthier food. It's the same thing with us. You know, if you get told that keto diet is the way you ought to go because of health issues, most people can't stick to it because we are carbohydrate addicts as well for the most part. We have gotten addicted to that highly processed uh, corn and wheat and everything else and God knows what all the sugars that they kind of are able to sneak in as far as high fructose corn syrup and they can call it something else and sneak it in and you don't realize you're eating a ton of sugar until you look at the label carefully. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for showing up today. I hope this is helpful. Um, I'm heading over to the Crock Pet Chefs page. If you are not a member, um, you know, it, it's very simple to join. All you need to do is purchase the original Crock Pet Diet. Anyone that's ever had a consultation with me or the other uh, digital products, the Gut Health, Gut Instincts program, or the Kidney Health program, this gives you access uh, to to our members area where I can continue to support people. And um, it, it's great because we see so many people um, that are a, that are helping each other on the um, helping each other out as far as getting um, you know you know answers to questions because they've been doing it for a while and all that good stuff. So, Again, that's what I got for you today. Um, if you are not a, uh, a member, I'm going to put the link in here so that you can go over and check it out. If you've purchased um, one or more of those products, um, just you know, sign up, tell us, tell us what you've purchased, and we'll go ahead and approve you and get you going. If you haven't, then head over. So here's the link for the uh, group. And then if you haven't, then, you know, head over to my store and check this out. Um, it's just, you know, we try to, I try to give you guys as much information uh, as possible. And, you know, because information is power. So that's what I have for you today. Take good care until next week. And this is our new live time. Until next week, remember, your pet's best health starts in the bowl. I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally.